Alright guys, so we have less than two days until the Iki Island expansion drops for Ghost of Tsushima and of course, if you want to get ready for that, if you want to fare better in the new expansion or if you just want to have a lot more fun, there's a few key preparations that you can do right now to get ready for the new director's cut. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the things that I'm doing right now and hopefully they're going to be just as useful for you as well and let's jump right into it. Now coming right up, if you haven't done so already, the first thing I suggest for you guys is to go ahead and just finish the main campaign first so that you can then access the new game plus mode you can't access it otherwise and this new game plus mode also gives you access to some really cool exclusive items and gear that you can't get otherwise I would also suggest you go ahead and after starting a new game plus to just finish the entirety of chapter one and also complete as much as possible in the first region of Izuhaura. Once you opened up chapter two and the second part of the island, just wait over there until the Iki Island expansion drops because you're going to be able to resume right into the expansion. And this way I will argue you can also keep things fresh and have a brand new experience in the expansion while still having some stuff to do on the main island. Now if you haven't done the new game plus or if you haven't finished the main campaign yet, don't worry there's stuff for you in here as well and if you're in that position I suggest you just go ahead, play the game normally and once the new campaign drops you're gonna be able to continue from that point on or just do them alternatively it doesn't really matter, just know that once you go on the Iki Island you're gonna be stuck there for a few missions. Another thing that I fully recommend is to also go ahead and complete the side objectives, especially ones that give you charms that you don't already have. Last year I made a full top 10 list of the best charms in the game that I still recommend today. These are going to be super helpful at making builds ready for the Iki Island and more important they will make sense for some of the items in the new game plus that I will feature in just a little bit, especially for some of the really amazing synergies that I'm about to showcase. This brings us to number three which is the reason why you will want to do the new game plus content and that's because as I've said you're gonna get access to exclusive items and gear and a brand new vendor. So once you start a new game plus you're gonna have access to a brand new vendor called Baku the Voiceless and you can find him right here in the middle of the island of the Izuhara Lake. Now he was added in update 1.1 last year and he sells really amazing armors, also some really cool cosmetics but most important of them all, really crazy good charms. Also some fluff along the way, but some of these charms are truly amazing, so that's why I will cover a couple of builds that I'm already getting ready for that expansion. Now before jumping into the items themselves, this vendor uses a brand new currency that can only be acquired in the new game plus called Ghost Flowers. Now Ghost Flowers you only get them from quests that you have already completed before the new game plus in your first playthrough and these will substitute any rewards that you already got so any duplicate will be changed to Ghost Flowers in new game plus. This is the reason why I suggested to complete as many side quests as possible, especially for the ones that give you charms. But with that out of the way, let's start with some of these charms that I had a ton of fun with and I created a few builds for you guys so that you can get ready with them for this brand new DLC. Starting with the Thunder God build that uses the charm of Heavenly Rebuke that you get from Baku himself. Essentially on performing Heavenly Strike attacks, there's a chance Lightning to strike a nearby enemy. And it looks spectacular, pretty much something like this. Now since this is a percentage based ability, this means it greatly benefits from something like Charms of Fortune, which will actually increase its chance of happening, like the Lightning Strike chance of happening is increased by 100% between these two Charms of Fortune that I have right here. So essentially every time I do one of these hits, it doesn't take more than a couple of hits with a Heavenly Strike attack to have a Lightning Strike happening against a different target. You can stop like for example enemies going in and taking down hostages or enemies that are flanking you or just you know for the fun of it it looks really awesome and really powerful so this will be amazing on the Iki Island to strike fear into your foes hearts. 
Now, the second build, which is even more efficient, again, uses the exclusive items in New Game Plus. This time around, we're going with the Charm of the Blazing Flame, which will make your Way of the Flame ability to inflict additional damage, and heavy attacks will now also spread that fire to nearby enemies. We will actually use the second charm in the New Game Plus to buff it, which is going to be that Charm of Steadfast Fire, which is going to make that Way of the Flame ability last for even longer. And from this point on you can play around with a few other charms from the base game like the charm of enduring affliction which makes status effect to last 50% longer and also deal 50% more damage which fire also qualifies as also the charm of the fire doctrine works really well with this one it makes burning enemies to have a 15% chance to fully terrify nearby enemies and again I've combined that with a charm of fortune as well but you can mix and match these however you want to essentially not only not only do you burn targets, not only do you disable them before they get a chance to attack you, but if there's any enemy left around you that's still not set on fire, he will most likely run away in fear and you will essentially never get touched even on the lethal plus difficulty. Again, these are just a couple of builds right here and of course with the introduction of that patch last year, you can make these builds and save them right there into the armor slots and have them easily switchable on the fly whenever you want to like switch things up, play a different build and go against enemies in different ways in the new update. These of course aren't the only advantages that you will get from playing right away in New Game Plus, especially if you haven't fully upgraded or didn't have enough mats to fully upgrade all of your armors in the base version of the game. Because you get two armor sets that already come fully upgraded that kinda replace already existing armors when they are at their maximum of level 4. So the first one is going to be the Deadly Rivals Attire, this gives a massive boost towards melee damage as well as HP while still providing a very good bonus towards ghost weapon damage, like for example poisonous darts or kunai throws. So this can be a really amazing one and it already comes super equipped and it was also used by Ryuzo by the way if you liked that character in some of the starting missions. The second one is the archery mastery attire, this essentially is a max level 4 upgraded kind of like Tadayori's armor, so if you haven't played with the archery build that I well featured last year, this might be the best chance for you to do so, it's way less expensive, it only takes a few missions to get that, and you also get to rock Ishikawa's armor set in the new game plus mode, so yeah, that's pretty much a win-win situation right there. On top of this, there's not much to say about Baku, but it does give you access to extra cosmetics that you can't get otherwise, like the Ghost Armor Avenger Spring die that looks really really amazing it looks something like this by the way and you can get it otherwise so yeah definitely one of the best right there and also Tata Yori's armors with the flowers of war gets one of the best recolors in the game for this specific armor set if you're already rocking it there's a few more in there including masks but you can go ahead and buy them at a later date the first two ones especially the charms are the ones that I recommend the most this is it though with the Iki Island preparations, totally let me know down below if there's anything else that you're doing to get ready for the new DLC and I'll see you guys in the next video.